One of the most common questions I get is, how can I fund my real estate? I want to become an investor. I'm just not sure what to do, where to go. Well, there's no one size fits all approach. And whether or not you're a new real estate investor or a seasoned investor, there is not one size fits all. Now, I've done multiple ways over the years. I've borrowed from my 401k, I've used my IRA, I've used cash, I've used business credit cards. We're gonna dive into all of the different ways that you can use in order to invest in real estate. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Clayton Morris. I'm the founder of Morris Invest, which is a full service real estate investing company. We build duplexes like this in mid phase right here, new construction. So if you are new, welcome and subscribe to the channel, smash that like button as well. So we're gonna go through 10 different ways today that you can fund your next real estate deal. I'm sure that you'll be able to use one of these strategies to start investing in real estate or pull a few of them together and be creative. Number one is cash. Obviously, this is the most obvious way of investing in real estate. You have cash in the bank and you would like to convert that into a stream of cash. Remember, if you have money sitting in the bank, that money is losing value every day because of inflation. So if you have a Wells Fargo savings account or Bank of America savings account, one of those, you're earning probably 0.001% if you're lucky. If you're lucky, right? Inflation is about 2% and it's going up. If you've been paying attention to the Federal Reserve, they plan to let inflation run hot over the next few years to compensate for the very low inflation that we've been experiencing. That means that if it's at 2% now, it could go to 3%. And that means the value of your dollar in a bank is losing value every day. $1 sitting in a bank is worth less tomorrow because of inflation. The idea here is to be able to convert that cash into a performing asset like real estate, which has always been a hedge against inflation. Even with a very conservative 3 or even 4% appreciation year after year in real estate, that is beating inflation, right? and not to mention all of the tax benefits that you get from real estate. So cash, of course, is king. Cash is one of the most powerful ways to buy real estate. But I think you'll notice in the next nine options that there might be some better things for you to do. Not use all of your cash. Why would you wanna use all of your cash when there are so many other financing options available, which we'll get to next. Number two is business credit cards. I'm reminded of one of my mentors, Robert Kiyosaki, who he writes about this in Rich Dad Poor Dad. He used a business credit card in order to fund the purchase of his first rental property in Hawaii, and you can too. Now we've partnered at our company with a great team at Fund and Grow, and you'll get $500 off your signup fee if you use our link on our website. If you go to Morris Invest dot com slash funding. You can learn all about it. You can watch their webinar and see if it's a fit for you. But what they'll do is they'll set up business credit cards with 0% interest. That's right. And they'll negotiate with the banks to get you a lot more money. So the very first time that I partnered with them, I ended up getting almost $180,000 of 0% interest on these credit cards, able to pull that money out of the credit cards. You can actually wire that money to closing at a title company. So they've got all of the pieces in place for you to use this as an option. Now, I'm not saying that this is the ultimate option, but it certainly could be a tool in your arsenal where you could use this as a down payment on a property that's appreciating. So that in that 18 month period where you have that 0% interest, you can refinance that property, pull that equity out of the property, pay off those credit cards and do it again. Now, the first round of funding that I got from them, again, was around $180,000. The great thing about working with them is that they can re-up it every year. So the next batch I got was $90,000. And I've been able to buy multiple rental properties across the country using this strategy of business credit cards. Don't knock it until you check it out. Again, if you want to learn more about it, go to morrisinvest.com slash funding to see more information about it. The third way is private money. Now, private money really is just borrowing it from Uncle Jim, right? It is private money. It doesn't necessarily have to be an institution, although it can be. Most of the time, though, it's going to come from a friend or a relative or a business associate. And the beauty of private money is that it's not regulated by the government. So you could construct any type of relationship you want with a friend. So imagine this scenario where you've got an uncle who has a lot of money in the bank. He's earning nothing, right? Remember point number one, because it's sitting in a savings account, so he's actually losing money. What if you went to Uncle Jim and said, hey, uncle, I've got a great real estate deal that I'd like to invest in. I know you've got some money set aside. How would you like to be partners on this deal? And I will pay you interest on the money that you lend me so that I could buy this rental property. And Uncle Jim might say, sure, let me hear about this, Clayton. Let me hear more about this deal. 
okay, uncle, here's what I need to do. I need to borrow $50,000 for a down payment on this rental property. Now, for this down payment, I'll pay you 5% interest for 30 years. And that uncle may say, great, let's draw up a promissory note. It's that simple. You can go online and draw up a promissory note that says you'll pay your uncle back at 5% annual for 30 years. And you do, you start paying him back. Now, the beauty is now you've got the down payment money and you can finance the rest using some of the other methods we'll talk about. So if you've got friends or relatives, that's great. But if you don't have these rich relatives and friends, you might have to go to a real estate meetup group to meet these private money lenders. And they exist. They're all over the place. You can even look them up on LinkedIn just by doing a simple search for private money lenders. Now, they don't have a relationship with you, so it's incumbent upon you to try to develop a relationship. So if you go to a real estate meetup by going to meetup.com, you'll probably find a real estate meetup in your neck of the woods. Go there once a month. Talk to the people in the room. Let them know that you're a real estate investor and you're interested in buying buy and hold rental properties. You might find some private money lenders in that room who are willing to put up some funds and develop a relationship with those people. Take them out to lunch, go grab a coffee. They may say, yeah, I don't buy real estate. I lend money. I'm a money lender and I look for good deals. Great. Develop a relationship, negotiate some terms, and that's how you're off to the races. Number four on my list is a home equity line of credit, one of my favorite ways to invest in real estate. If you have a primary residence or a secondary residence that has equity in that property, why not pull that equity out of that property in order to purchase cash flowing real estate? Remember my rule, you cannot eat equity. So if you're sitting on $100,000 in equity, uh, $50,000 in equity uh, in your primary residence, you can't eat that, it's just sitting there. So why wouldn't you go to your local bank and say, I'd like to get a home equity line of credit and pull that money out. Now you have access to a line of credit of 50, $100,000. You could buy two rental properties as down payments with that money. You could turn that $50,000 into $3,000 a month in cash flow just by pulling out the equity in your rental property. Now, things tightened up a bit earlier this year during the pandemic. Now banks are loosening up again and they're lending money like crazy and they are opening up their HELOC programs once again. They pulled these back at the beginning of the year when there was a bit of a panic. Now these secondary programs are being opened up again because the Federal Reserve is pumping trillions of dollars into Wall Street and the banking sector, they're lending again. And that's great news for us as real estate investors because interest rates have never been this low. Number five on my list is your 401k. This was one of the first ways that I invested in real estate by using my 401k. Now, you can withdraw from a 401k or borrow from a 401k. Originally, I borrowed from my 401k. You're, you were allowed to up to $50,000 and that would, enabled me to buy my first two rental properties. Most people don't even know that they can borrow from their 401ks. Yes, I had Fidelity as my provider. You're able to go right to the website, log in, borrow as much as you want. Within three clicks, I had $50,000 in my personal bank account. You pay it back out of your payroll. You set the payback terms. So one year, two years, three years, depending on how long you think you'll be at that job and you pay it back. Another thing you can do is withdraw that money from your 401k. And the beauty right now of the CARES Act in the year 2020, you've got to take advantage of this before the end of 2020, is that under the CARES Act, you're able to take out up to $100,000 without penalty. Do you want your money tied up in a volatile stock market where you're paying exorbitant fees to money managers to manage your 401k? Or would you rather access that money, put it into a performing asset, and that cash flow every month pays you? I know where I would put my money. I would not want my money tied up in a crazy stock market that is on the verge of crashing. I've done a full video on the CARES Act right here on the channel. So please check out that video and learn more about all of the things that you can take advantage of in the CARES Act. Number six is a self-directed IRA, one of my favorite ways to invest in real estate. Now, I've done a comprehensive video series on the self-directed IRA. You can check that out as well. We'll also have a link in the description below. But it really is a flexible way for you to invest in real estate and then not have to pay taxes on the profits of that real estate. Investing in real estate inside of your self-directed IRA allows that wealth to grow tax-free. Being strategic with a self-directed IRA is a powerful way for you to grow a portfolio of real estate without paying taxes. What happens is the self-directed IRA actually owns the piece of real estate and the cash flow from those tenants every month goes into that account. Now you can't touch it until you retire, but guess what? That cash flow 
grows tax-free. So when you pull it out at 59 and a half years old, that money you don't pay taxes on. It's a brilliant way to build wealth. Number seven is a 1031 exchange. Now, this is a powerful tool. If you already own a piece of real estate that maybe isn't performing very well, like every year you're just kind of breaking even on it, that's no way to invest in real estate. For instance, this is one of our new construction duplexes right here. You can see two garages. This cash flow is over $3,000 a month. This is a fantastic return on investment. So you might have a property that's inherited, that's not performing very well, that you can then roll into better, higher performing real estate. Again, this is more of an advanced strategy, but using a 1031 exchange allows you to exchange your existing non-performing properties for better, higher performing properties. Our team at Morris Invest can help you with that. So if you have properties that you would like to exchange up, Book a call with us at morrisinvest.com. Our team is set up to take care of you and lead you through that 1031 exchange process. Number eight is hard money. Again, I've used all of these tools. I've used hard money over the years. Typically, it's a financial institution not tied to the federal government, not tied to any banking regulations. So they are allowed to lend out money at any interest rate they want. I've borrowed high interest rate money when I was just getting started. And that's okay, because I didn't really have an other way to go. I didn't have a great credit score at the time, and they don't care. They're not really looking at your personal credit score. They're more interested in the asset you're going to buy. So for instance, if you were gonna buy one of these new construction duplexes, they would be looking at this instead of you. They would be able to see that the asset is great, the cash flow is great, it's in a great area, in a good school district, low crime, low vacancy, managed with a property management company, all of those things, it's brand new construction in a brand new subdivision, yes, they're gonna lend money on that. Now, it's up to you to discuss the terms. They may require you to pay points when you close. You may pay higher interest than you would, obviously, working with a traditional bank. So these are some things to weigh, but again, if you are trying to get creative with your financing, you have limitations because of a credit score or other things, this might be a great option for you. But I would consider thinking about the funding option with credit cards that we talked about earlier as a better way to go because the points that you might pay for while you're closing with hard money are going to be more, more costly than if you use the 0% interest credit card option we talked about in the beginning part of this video. If you missed that, rewind the video. Number nine is non-recourse financing, something that's near and dear to our hearts at Morris Invest because the beauty of partnering with banks that understand the value of an asset is that they are willing to put financing in place on the asset itself, not you, meaning there's no recourse for you. Non-recourse is great because it's simply based on the asset itself. Let me give you an example. For instance, this new construction duplex. With non-recourse financing, we've partnered with banks that already value this asset. They've seen it from the whole construction phase, from the beginning to the end. They've vetted this house. They've been through it because they are putting their money up for this property. So that when a client comes to work with us, this non-recourse financing is already built into the property. It's already set up. So if you're an investor that doesn't have a great credit score or you're an international investor that without a US presence, or you wanna go beyond the 10 limit of the Fannie and Freddie federal guideline rules that allow you to buy more than 10 properties, non-recourse financing is a powerful way to do it. So again, our team has set up and worked with non-recourse lenders over the years. We have a great relationship with them. If you're interested in learning more about that, again, feel free to book a call with us and we can walk you through the non-recourse. We also have other videos here on the channel that really deep dive all of the intricacies of non-recourse financing. And number 10, Partner up. You know, this is a great way to find a buddy, find a relative who wants to get involved in real estate, but you might not both have a large chunk of change in which to invest. But what if you come together as a team and you bring 25,000 and he brings 25,000, you set up an LLC together, which can be done in a matter of minutes. And now your LLC in partnership owns that piece of cash flowing rental property. And you didn't have to come out of pocket the full amount beauty of partnerships. We work with them at our company all the time. We will work with clients who will come together, set up an LLC and start buying multiple properties. Now they've got a business. These friends have come together with a real estate investing business that seeks out rental properties. It's a great way for you to get started without having to put as much money down. But wait, there's more. We actually have a bonus method at Morris Invest. 
That's right. We actually have a bonus method that allows you to refer a friend and actually get money towards buying a rental property. So how's this for an awesome option? Number one, if you refer someone to Morris Invest who ends up buying an investment property with us, you'll receive $1,500 credit towards a new property or your closing costs for you. And you can repeat this until you get a free house. That's right. So you can keep referring people until you get a free rental property. You can use your credit immediately or you can stock up until you get an entire property for free. If you're interested in that, please go to morrisinvest.com slash refer. Again, that's morrisinvest.com slash refer to read the rules and disclaimers and to fill out and refer anybody you know. So if you made it to the end of this video and you are ready to get started with real estate investing and any help along the way with financing, our team at Morris Invest can help you do that. Simply book a 30 minute free phone call with our team right now by going to morrisinvest.com and we will take care of you. Now go out there folks, Take advantage of rental real estate. The interest rates are incredibly low, and I believe real estate is the number one way to build wealth. We'll see you next time.